Welcome to the tutorial on consciousness, the first topic on the first step of the pyramid. In this tutorial, we will begin by defining consciousness because it can mean many different things in many different teachings. Then we will examine how consciousness is portrayed visually in a Buddhist teaching, the story of the life of Prince Siddhartha. We will then use that story to formulate the three parameters by which consciousness is measured, frequency, duration, and depth. And we will end the tutorial by setting an exercise that will help us increase the frequency of our consciousness. So we begin with defining consciousness. And for that, let's break up our day into its many small units of activity. Now I'm walking through the corridor of my office. Now I sit down on my chair. Now I sip from my coffee. Now I receive a text message. Now I can perform all these activities with or without awareness. When I perform them unawares, we consider that I am performing them unconsciously or mechanically in the sense that they're happening automatically. On the other hand, when I perform them with awareness, we consider that they're being done consciously in the sense that I am aware of myself walking through the corridor, sitting on my chair, sipping from my coffee and so forth. Now, the slightest experimentation with doing these daily activities consciously should lead to two important verifications. The first is that mechanical actions happen naturally, whereas conscious actions require effort. They do not happen naturally, they're not automatic. And the second is that consciousness is not functions, meaning it is added as a separate dimension onto functions without necessarily replacing them. So I can walk through the corridor being aware of myself, it doesn't change my walking. I can sit down on my chair with awareness, it doesn't change my sitting. I can sip from my coffee, it doesn't change my sipping, and so forth. This verification that consciousness adds on to functions as a separate dimension is evocative of this Buddhist image from the story of the life of Prince Siddhartha of a moment called the Great Departure. In this particular scene, Siddhartha is mounted on his horse and is captured in the moment where he's leaving his father's kingdom. Notice how, when viewed from the side, the muzzle of his horse pierces out from the two-dimensional space of the relief into a new third dimension. In speaking of evolution, it is necessary to understand from the outset that no mechanical evolution is possible. The evolution of man is the evolution of his consciousness and consciousness cannot evolve unconsciously. So now that we've defined consciousness as an awareness separate from function, as a dimension that adds on to the dimension of functions, we're also prompted to examine what does it mean to change. After all, change can apply to functions or change can apply to consciousness. We can change functions in the sense of walking through the corridor differently or sitting down differently or not sipping my coffee or not answering my texts. Or we can change consciousness in the sense of bringing more or less awareness to all these daily activities. One would be change on one dimension and the other would be change on a different dimension. The B pyramid aims at change of consciousness and we will only alter functions in as much as they affect the change of consciousness. And we place consciousness both at the beginning of the pyramid as a topic and at the end, abbreviated by the word B. I am as I walk through the corridor. I am as I sit on the chair. I am as I sip my coffee. Now let's return to the story of Prince Siddhartha whose birth is shrouded with auspicious signs causing his mother and father, the king and queen, to inquire of the future of this very special boy. One sage predicts he will grow to become either a great monarch or a great holy man. His father, the king, wanting to ensure his royal lineage and succession, 
decides to isolate the boy from all forms of human suffering or religious teaching, and confines him to a palace full of luxury. So for a long time, the prince grows up in this confined and conditioned environment, never suspecting that there is a great world of which he's barred and ignorant. But slowly, he becomes curious of the outside world. He ventures outside his father's palace on a chariot, meets an old man, and for the first time verifies the reality of old age. On a second excursion outside the palace, he meets a sick man and verifies the fragility of the human body. On the third excursion, he sees a dead man carried on a bier and verifies the reality of death. Disillusioned, Siddhartha finally asks his father permission to depart forever. The king refuses to let his son go. Siddhartha begs his father, it is wrong to lay hold of one who would escape from a house that is on fire. When one realizes that one deceives oneself, that one is asleep and one's house is on fire, always permanently on fire, and that it is only by accident that the fire has not reached one's room at this very moment. When one realized this, one will want to make efforts to awake, and one will not expect any special reward. That night, the king arranges the most lavish feast, hoping to revive his son's interest in palatial life. Repelled, Siddhartha falls asleep, and when he wakes up in the middle of the night, he finds the entire palace in deep slumber. Looking at the sights around him, the sleeping dancers and servants, he formulates a firm desire to depart from this artificial world. Siddhartha mounts his horse and quietly ventures out into the unknown. We reviewed these many nuances of the development of Prince Siddhartha because it took all these different little stages of realization to bring him to, to the point where he now stands, ready to depart, which, as we saw, is a penetration into a new dimension, just as we defined consciousness. The nuances of the development of Siddhartha point to the three parameters by which we measure consciousness. The first is frequency, in the sense of how frequently I remember to be conscious. The second is duration, in the sense of how long I maintain, I hold my consciousness each time I make an effort. And the third is depth of how many things, of how many aspects I am aware of when I am conscious. Notice that in the story of Prince Siddhartha, there was an increasing frequency of his excursions outside the palace, or his excursions into that new hidden dimension. There was a first excursion, but that was not enough, then a second, then a third, then a fourth. We can even presume that each excursion may have lasted longer as the curiosity of this boy was kindled. So then each excursion was of a longer duration, till finally he's ready to be where he now is, on the cusp of the great departure, which would be a complete exit, a complete penetration into the new dimension, which will then afford depth. By observing in yourself, the appearance and the disappearance of consciousness, you will inevitably see that moments of consciousness are very short and are separated by long intervals of completely unconscious mechanical working on the machine. And this will be our aim for this week, to increase the frequency of our consciousness. And for this end, we will set an exercise which will be to answer our phone consciously, or answer our text messages with awareness. As a reminder for this aim, we will change our ringtones and our message tones to a different tone than the one we are accustomed to. The surprise of this new ringtone, which we call a shock in the positive sense, will remind us of our aim to answer consciously, being aware of ourselves speaking, being in a new dimension. 
We also offer to download the image of Siddhartha's Great Departure to be used as wallpaper on your smartphone if you wish, as a further reminder of our aim to be more conscious as we use our phone. It is very easy to underestimate the value of a simple effort to be conscious to answering my phone or sitting on my chair or walking through the corridor. But we have to remember that we're piercing into a new dimension, just like Siddhartha, stepping out into a new unexplored dimension with infinite possibilities over the previous narrow existence that he led. Frequency leads to duration and duration leads to depth. We start with frequency, trying to increase the moments, the frequency that we are conscious in our daily life. Once we have enough frequency, duration becomes more possible. Each of those moments can, can become longer. And then once duration is more frequent, then depth becomes a possibility. So from these humble efforts of simply trying to be as I talk or or be as I sip my coffee, or be as I walk through the corridor. We have begun a very long journey. For Siddhartha, it will culminate in enlightenment. For us, it will culminate in creating a master, in becoming masters of ourselves. All new powers and capacities of realization come always in one and the same way. At first, they appear in the form of flashes at rare and short moments. Afterwards, they appear more often and last longer, until finally, after very long work, they become permanent.